Yeah. Steve, well, thanks for thanks for taking the time today to have a quick chat. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick Jensen Jones, uh, Director of Research for Headstamp Publishing, uh, and the co-editor uh, with Stephen Weiss of this forthcoming book, Swords of the Emperor. Uh, Steve, you've kind of been uh, two hats on this project, uh, some of the editing, but more of a, I guess, a producer role um, in, in a film analogy, uh, taking this book from, from concept through to, uh, to finished form with me and, and the rest of the Headstamp team. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's been a long journey. I met John in 2010, uh, and uh, a few years later, he mentioned he'd like to do a book for his sword collection, which is nearly every type of these these swords that we're going to talk about, uh, you know, from 1873 to 1945. And I said, yeah, let's do it. How hard can it be? <laughs> right? So, uh, but he didn't, he's not a computer guy, you know, he's the anti-collector kind of guy. He, he usually destroys computers after they don't do what he wants. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I used my skills. I'd published a couple books before and, you know, I, I worked in the movie industry making movies and I was like, well, I should be able to figure out how to do the rest of the stuff, you know, hire photographers, do the photo shoots, you know, the because John had the swords and he had the knowledge. So we just had to take it that, that out of his head and put it into a book form. And were you a sword guy before that? Is this something that you've been, you know, historically interested yeah, in? Yeah, well, that's how we met, actually. Okay. Uh, you know, he... He would normally go to the Scottish restaurant in Los Angeles, and I happened to be visiting, and there uh, was a display of these sort of historical swords on the wall, and they were uh, they were labeled. Almost all of them were <laughs> incorrectly labeled. And I mentioned to the server, uh, I said, "You know, this isn't this isn't a long sword at all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like this is a court sword or a dueling sword, right?" And he says, "Oh, you know about swords?" And I said, "Yeah, well." I do sword fighting for for film, uh, you know, a choreography and sword fighting on screen, and and he's like, oh, really? You need to meet Mr. Plimpton, and then uh, he said, well, I'm here every week. You can come anytime, and so that was sort of the beginning. You know, I started off as a fencer. I did some traditional long sword fighting. Uh, one, uh, the Italian school called Fiore, which has sort of been rediscovered uh, in the last few decades. Uh, we found some documentation on how it works, which is a really cool style because it's it's not fancy like fencing it's realistic there's moves like here's how you crush your opponent's knee or smash their hand you know <laughs> yeah and I, and I come from a fencing background so funnily enough that that very much appeals to me you know that transition away from learning the sport uh, when i was younger towards learning the art and and the uh, you know the history underpinning it so i mean i guess that, that takes me to my next question which is can you tell us a little about a bit about the process i mean you know you said john's not a computer guy and you were sort of there to yeah, make things work and, and get everything kind of um, organized in a way that could be useful for publishing. What did that look like? What did you guys do when you walked into the room? Okay, that's a good question. You know, I sat down and said, let's do a book. And uh, I think the first thing I had to do with John is is come up with a layout uh, that he wanted, which, which photos we were going to take of each sword. And these swords specifically are identifiable by the fittings. And uh, the blades are different and, you know, because the blades could be cheap blades that are kind of mass produced. Or if the, the family, the, the Japanese officer's family had a, an heirloom blade, they could actually have that blade uh, fitted to the mounts uh, of the new uh, officer rank. And we right, have some fantastic they... examples of that in the book, you know, which people will be able to see some really beautiful, you know, antique, uh, multi hundred year old blades in relatively modern fittings. Right, exactly. And uh, so what happens is, uh, uh, so there's a whole bunch of these different uh, identifiers. And so he's like, we have to get it from all these different angles. So I, you know, we put together a layout. And then what I did is said, okay, John, you've got so many swords, and we're going to do this like a movie. Basically, uh, if you've seen a, a movie slate, uh, where, you know, they have the clapboard and you clap it, you know, uh, we basically isolated every sword. So each day was like day one, day two, and then each sword was, you know, uh, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. You basically had to develop your own methodology to process hundreds of swords, thousands of photographs that are in the final book in a pretty short space of time. I mean, you, it's from our perspective, from a publisher's perspective, really impressive. Well, it was fortunate, I guess, that I had the background in movies. You know, I had recently finished production on my feature film, Altered Spirits. And, uh, you know, got to see the whole 
you know, it, it, like that, making a movie is 10 times more complicated than what we did with the, the, the sword book. So I guess it was good preparation for that. And I think it's, you know, just to reiterate for, for people who are watching, there are uh, more than 2,000 photos in this book. There are hundreds of swords from all sorts of angles. It's, um, you know, certainly when we're going to publish a book about any topic, we go away and look at what's on the market previously. And I think it's the first thing is there aren't, there aren't any recent books on this period of Japanese swords. Most of the, the ones that exist are quite old. And those that are out there are mostly black and white um, and fairly limited in terms of photography. This is uh, an absolute step change, an order of magnitude more detailed than anything that's ever been published on these swords. Yeah, I mean, this is meant to be sort of the seminal book on the subject. Yeah. And uh, I think it you know, goes so well with head stamp and the whole idea of forgotten weapons, even where, <laughs> you know, uh, these the Japanese sort of don't care much about these swords because right. they are into the handmade individual samurai swords, you know, and those are worth, you know, I mean, we have some that are worth, you know, over $10,000 and even $100,000 in our book, but you know, they're, they're, they just tend to value the older ones more. Sure. And these, you know, are from a period that they uh, don't talk about as much. And this, I think, is going to be the seminal work uh, on these on these swords, uh, at least for the time being, because uh, what else is out there is, is just not um, produced to modern standards and doesn't have the same level of scholarship. Definitely. And, and I, you know, part of this was John would, and it's just a, the other books are, are, are good. They're not. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the Gregory and Fuller book, John would occasionally be like, you know, I really wish people knew this was a mistake. You know, there's a few mistakes in it. And he's like, man, I want to, I want people to know that this is really, you know, a Gonzoku sword. For and there's time to that too. I mean, that was published, uh, I'm trying to remember the year now, but at least 30 years ago. Yeah, I think around, it might have been the 70s. Around, oh, really? Okay. Okay. Because I know there's another one. 94 there might have been one in the late, late 70s early 80s in any case they're all outdated um, in terms of the information I mean, obviously information um, we more of it comes to light over time but also just the production methods i mean black and white photos uh or right. low quality color photos in some of the books um it's tough and they're not available and they're very expensive you know, a lot of those books that people might want to buy uh, look at right those are out of print now, of those, yeah, that we, that we used. <laughs> so right. those are and we have full color and, you know, I mean, John had, I think it's, I'd say about 95% of the swords were in John's collections, so, right. you know, photograph them also. They're all consistent uniform. photography. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's and, really and, and, uh, and, and detailed and, you know, we yeah, it's a great them. point. I think a lot of people don't think about that comparing apples with apples kind of thing. You know, if you're comparing photos of three different swords and they're all from slightly different angles, from different perspectives, you know, some, sort of different levels of quality it's it's much harder to make the comparison than when they're all exactly the same sword uh, same same photo setup same camera same angle i think you do get a lot of benefit from seeing them um displayed in a uniform format in the book right and we are able to shoot these in 600 dpi because of modern technology yeah that's the other thing i mean no one doing a book in the 70s was was getting the quality that we're getting in our photos today. <laughs> right as simple as that all right um, well, thanks for taking the time, Steve. It's really interesting to talk with you. I know that people are fascinated by this book. We get a lot of emails about it. People have stumbled across it on the on the website before we've even made a public announcement and reached out to us. So hopefully now that it's it's live and available on headstamppublishing.com, you can go and pre-order your copy now. Um, please do, because you know, as Steve said, this is a bit of a, a new ground for us. So we're really relying on people to um, express their interest in this and show that there is a market for a book on Japanese swords, uh, not just the firearms that we ordinarily do. And we'd love to be able to get a yeah, good-sized print run and, and give this book the life and the duration that it deserves. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. I mean, it, you know, if you have any of the other head stamp books, you're going to want this to put alongside it, <laughs> you know, and, and then look yeah. at the beautiful pic cover, the pictures, you know, everything. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again, Steve. Yeah, you're welcome.